Hey, what's up? This is Josen, and in this video, we are going to be talking about how free to play you can slowly be grinding up a very important resource in game, which is platinum. You can see that right now I'm up to 321,000, and prices on my server are a little bit lower than some of the other servers out there. So I could easily be at like 500k right now if I were on a different server, and I am by no means a whale or making a bunch of platinum from buying it or, or selling legendary gems from Elder Crest or anything like that. I'm going to show you how you can grind about 100,000 platinum a month completely free to play and just playing the game properly, making sure you're focusing on the right things. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, I want to quickly talk about the mindset as you're going into this stuff. This is an MMORPG. It's about the long term, the long haul, and the macro picture. So don't compare yourself to the uber kraken whale out there that's spending $100,000. Compare yourself to setting yourself up for success long term. Where are you going to be at on your account six months from now? eight months from now, a year from now, and just making sure you're doing the things daily, weekly, to put yourself uh, in a position where you can progress faster and better than the average person. Focus on controlling what you can control and not what the crack and whales are doing. Okay, so now that we're going into things with a healthy and proper mindset in terms of how we're going to manage our account and try to acquire platinum, which is going to be an extremely important resource over the long-term acquisition of more power for your class, there's a couple things we need to focus on every day and making sure we're getting done while managing how to properly acquire it and work around the different soft caps, hard caps, and things like that that exist in the daily routine of the game. So first off, the number one important thing you want to do is be able to group farm every day. Uh, I, you know, I kind of disagree with how this is designed, but the way it is, uh, all we can do is play the game and, and how it is intended to be played. Uh, we have to group up in a group of four to get gems to drop. This is not something you can do solo. You want to be grouping up, uh, not only for doing those dungeons for your sets, Although right now in the current state of the game, I think open world farming is the thing to do, but that's a separate video uh, that I talked with. I'll, I'll try to remember to link to that uh, right here where I talked with Veiled about, uh, you know, deciding when and, and why, uh, why you shouldn't be grinding dungeons right now or, or, or what to think about in terms of that topic. But in terms of this topic, you want to be open world grinding with a group of four because then you're going to be unlocking a buff that will show top left you, next to that, uh, that, that icon that shows that I'm above server XP. Uh, that will bring up an icon that says gem drops enabled or enhanced or whatever. And that's when you'll start dropping those tourmalines, the aquamarines, the rubies and things like that while you are out killing stuff either in dungeons or open world XP legendary grinding. And acquiring these gems is going to be extremely important because eventually your server may end up at a spot like mine where for sure the damage dealing gems like tourmalines and sapphires are going to be instantly sold out. That's what all the high spenders are going to want to be acquiring as fast as they can to max out the damage of the character. But not only that, the citrines and the topazes and all of that will start getting extremely sparse, selling close to the maximum, which on my server at the current moment is 400 per a normal level one gem. So while you're acquiring these gems, you're just stacking up 400, 800, 1200 platinum, and you're able to do this every single day to stack up thousands of platinum as long as you're active in the game and you've got three other people that you can rely on grinding with you and doing this every day. And then in terms of understanding how the gem drops are going to work, when you start playing with your full group, whether you're doing your set dungeons or you're doing open world grinding, the first six gems that you acquire, the, the regular gems, the aquamarines and stuff, the first six, you're going to acquire at a pretty rapid pace. They're going to, they're going to drop at a decent rate. After that, it seems to slow down uh, pretty significantly and it seems to cap out around 12. Uh, so just get those first six at least every day and then if you could play a little bit longer you should be able to get a few more until you hit that soft cap which right now in our current understanding seems to be at 12. So you can see how that will start to quickly add up. You're doing that every day. Uh, this is uh, from leftover from me last night and this morning open world grinding a little bit. Boom, I can pop in, max this out, max these out. That's 1600 plat right there. I go here, max it out, 
max it out. We got 1600 plus 2K. That's 3600 just from last night and this morning. Obviously, you have to pay some tax on that. So it'll be around 3K or whatever. Uh, but poof, very easy. I'm grinding for legendaries. I'm grinding for XP. And then I get some gems that I can throw up on the market for the max price on my server. Uh, I'm full on uh, items right now, so I can't sell that. But uh, stacking thousands and thousands of platinum that will add up over the course of weeks and months. There also seems to be a little bit of confusion around hidden layers that some new players experience. Now, hidden layers are a great source for gems, but I believe they're going to cap out around six gems that you can acquire from hidden layers every day. And the reason this gets confusing is the ones that drop from the hidden layer specifically are not going to show up in the chat and they're not going to be tradable in the market. Those are going to be account bound. But... If you're in a full group doing the hidden layer, you are you are obviously eligible to drop some of those gems that are tradable that you're farming with that gem buff uh, that's live up in the top left. So if, if it's one of those gems that drop and it's, it, it happens to drop in the hidden layer, but it's part of your group farming, that one will be tradable. So I know it's a little bit confusing in terms of how the hidden layer mechanic works and it definitely throws off players here and there. Then on top of that, I want to talk about the Hilt Trader for a little bit. So let's navigate there and, and talk about some of the mechanics and, and how this works. So the, the gems that you're going to buy from the Hilt Trader are going to be account bound. But uh, it is a decent source of acquiring some gems uh, to, to be able to use on your account to rank things up. So you want to kind of pop in and, and look at this stuff. Now, you've got a weekly limit of your 10 normal gems. If you buy these, you get to pick what ones you want. And this is a no-brainer. You always want to pick the one that is for damage for your class. So for me, I am a demon hunter. Very easily, I'm going to pop those tourmalines that I can use to progress on my account. So, uh, you know, right now I've got a decent amount of hilts. Not not the worst thing to go ahead and max this out and get me some tourmalines uh, to be able to build up uh, slowly over the course of time uh, in, in terms of all of these to level up my DH. Now, you'll notice that they are account bound because if I go into the shop, I just bought 10 tourmalines. I was at zero tradable. And when I go to sell, those tourmalines are not over there. So it gets a little bit confusing. It, it should denote a little bit better in game on what is going to be sellable and what isn't. I know on this screen, you get like the market icon and all that when you're in your bag. Like if I back out and go to my inventory, you can see all of the ones that I just bought. They are down here. And you can see that I'm up to 12 tourmalines. I just bought the 10 from the Hilt Trader. But they don't have that little market icon, so they are not uh, going to be tradable, unfortunately. And I wish it would indicate that, like, in the game. It should uh, it should say right here, normal gems, uh, and then, like, in parentheses, bound or something. So I, I hope they add some indicators like that so these things get less confusing. And you can also uh, flip on down to the limited time tab, and there's going to be uh, a gem here every now and then. And obviously, same concept. You always want to be scooping up the ones that deal damage for your class. But again, same story on that one. It is not going to be tradable. But something else you can do is converting charms into skill stones that you can then list on the market for platinum. Which you can see right here up top, I've got a couple still uh, skill stones listed for sale right now as we speak. And it's usually not a problem to sell these uh, either at max or pretty close to max because uh, it is a huge RNG mechanic. And some of the higher spenders on your server are going to need a ton of those uh, to roll the, the right stats for the right class and what they're going to want on them. So what you can do as you're acquiring these charms and uh, not a bad purchase in terms of shifting it over to platinum, uh, turning your hilt into platinum, you buy these charms and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down to the merchant that handles the charms, which is going to be right here, the charms craftsman and you can navigate there very easily, but it's way down on the south kind of east edge of a West March right there. So we're going to head on over there and I can quickly show you, I know, I know some of you are going to understand how this process works. But I can walk you through uh, exactly if you are newer uh, to the game or you haven't messed around with some of this stuff in the market yet. So, all right, when we get over there to the Charms Craftsman, uh, we are going to go in. And what we have to do is we have to upgrade a charm to level 5. You can see I got one planned for the video that is sitting at rank 4 out of 5 over there on the right side. You can see that. Now, when I upgrade this again, you can see it's going to cost me the dust that we get from salvaging charms. So, there is a conversion rate. You have to salvage some of these to get enough dust to upgrade one to level five. When you can do that, you upgrade this to level five and now it becomes a grand charm. So now that that one became level five, we go over to the extract tab and now you see that one right here that I just took from level four to level five. I extract for 500. 
and boom now i have got a skill stone and that will show up under the imbue tab if i go in and click right here imbue you can see that when i pick this i'll have to select a skill stone and now that one is showing up that i just made and you can kind of sort that when you get a bunch of them rolling so what i can do now is head into the market click sell and then select my skill stone that I just showed you how to make. You take the charm, you have to salvage some in order to get the dust to upgrade it to level five. Once it's level five, you uh, you got to you gotta extract it into a skill stone. And once you have that, you see it has the market icon. It is tradable. Now, depending on the server, these prices are going to vary. But if you're patient and if you're willing to kind of be diligent about it, you can get a pretty decent price on them. I just like to do that and list it and then uh, kind of wait for my different skill stones to sell. You also don't have to really rush to sell them because the market's going to fluctuate. You, you'll, you'll, see, you'll get a time where the market kind of dries up and those high spenders on your server are going to be willing to pay a premium for those skill stones. So unless you are uber in a pinch uh i would kind of be patient and, and watch over and try to maximize your platinum revenue on converting those skill stones because you don't get to do it uh infinitely it, it's pretty tough to be able to get your hands on those they are a very rng uh heavy whale spending can be very expensive to get it uh to get it, it rolling with how the skills that you need so the high spenders in the server are going to need a lot of them and the way that this math works out, which is why I say 100,000 plus plat a month free to play, you're able to get, let's say, you, let's say you're not diligent and perfect about hitting the cap every single day. But let's say you farm up 10 gems a day. On my server, those 10 gems are instantly going to sell for 400 a piece. And 400 times 0.85, remember we have the tax, is going to be 340 a piece. Let's say you get 10 a day, 3,400 a day. And let's take that times 30 days in a month, 102,000 platinum a month. And that's not even considering any of the skill stone or fancy stuff or other stuff that you're doing in terms of the market. Just by being diligent about making sure you've got three people to play with and do a little bit of grinding every day and farm up those gems and then prioritizing getting the Mara uh, getting them on the market and getting rid of them so you can move to make platinum you should be at a hundred thousand platinum a month as long as you are playing and hitting those benchmarks every day so yeah good luck on your platinum acquiring endeavors uh, I love paying attention to stuff like this and, and analyzing things like making money and flipping different markets and stuff like that so make sure to subscribe because I will always keep you in the loop on, on things like this and as they evolve uh, I'm always theory crafting with friends behind the scenes talking about uh, stuff like this in our server and hanging out uh, and trying to make sure that we're doing this effectively so as things change I'll make sure and keep you in the loop and also let me know down below how you feel about some of this stuff do you agree with me disagree with me what are some of your methods i really enjoy uh, all of us being able to learn from each other and just try to get better over the course of time as we try to manage things effectively so that'll do it for this one as always thanks for watching have a good rest of your day peace